Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a conversation between the director of a child care centre and a parent enrolling her child in the centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Welcome to the Early Learning Child Care Centre. How may I help you? Hi, I spoke to you last week about enrolling my daughter for next year. Oh yes, I'll just get some details from you. So, you're her mother? That's right. And can I have your name? It's Carol. Carol Smith. The parent's name is Carol Smith. So, Smith has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. Welcome to the Early Learning Child Care Centre. How may I help you? Hi. I spoke to you last week about enrolling my daughter for next year. Oh, yes. I'll just get some details from you. So, you're her mother? That's right. And can I have your name? It's Carol. Carol Smith. And your daughter's name? It's Kate. Now, we have several groups at the centre and we cater for children from three to five years old. How old is your daughter? She's three now, but she turns four next month. I'll put four down, because that's how old she'll be when she starts. Fine. She's so excited about her birthday and coming to the centre. Oh, that's good to hear. And what's your address? It's 46 Wombat Road. That's W-O-M-B-A-T. Woodside 4032. And what's the phone number? Oh, it's... Three three four five mm -hmm. nine eight six five. So, have you decided on the days you would like to bring your daughter here? I'd prefer Monday and Wednesday if possible. Hmm, I'll check. Monday's fine, but I think the centre is already full for Wednesday. Uh, yes. Sorry, it seems to be a very popular day. We can offer you a Thursday or a Friday as well. Oh dear. I suppose Thursday would be all right because she has swimming on Friday. OK, got that. Because a lot of parents work, we do offer flexible start and finish times. We're open from 7.30 in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. What time would you like your daughter to start? I need to get to work in the city by 9, so I'll drop her off at 8.30. Mm -hmm. You're pretty close to the city here, so that should give me plenty of time to get there. That's fine. Now, we also need to decide which group she'll be in. We have two different groups, and they're divided up according to age. There's the green group, which is for three- to four-year-olds, and then there's the red group, which is for four- to five-year-olds. She's quite mature for her age, and she can already write her name and read a little. Well, I'll put her in the red group, and we can always change her to the green one if there are any problems. That sounds fine. OK. Let's move on to meals. We can provide breakfast, lunch and dinner. As she's finishing pretty early, she won't need dinner. Will you give her breakfast before she comes? Yes, she'll only need lunch. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Now, does she have any medical conditions we need to know about? Does she have asthma or any hearing problems, for example? No, but she does need to wear glasses. Oh, I'll make a note of that. Yeah, she's pretty good about wearing them. She can't see much without them. Right. OK. Now, I also need emergency contact details. So what sort of information do you need? Uh, just the name and number of a friend or family member we can contact in case we can't get hold of you at any time. OK. That'd better be my sister, Jenny Ball. Uh -huh. That's B-A-L-L. -L. Her phone number is 3346 7523. Great. So she is the child's aunt? Yes, that's right. I'll make a note of that as well. Now, is there anything you'd like to ask? What about payment? How much are the fees each term? Well, for two days and the hours you've chosen, that will be $450 altogether. OK. And do I have to pay that now? No. We send out invoices once the children start at the centre. You can choose to pay at the end of each term, or we do offer a slightly discounted rate if you pay every month. Oh, I'll do that then. I find it easier to budget that way, and I'm not used to the term dates just yet. <laughs> Good. It makes it a lot simpler for us as well. Well, that's everything. Would you like me to show you around the centre? We can go. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a man who owns a holiday home talking on the phone to a woman who is staying there. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. Hello? Hi, it's Laura Carlton here. We've just arrived at the holiday flat, but I can't get the hot water and heating to work. Oh, right. That's easy. Don't worry. In the upstairs cupboard, you'll find the water heater. You'll see three main controls on the left at the bottom of the heater. The first one, the round one on the far left, is the most important one for the heating and hot water. It's the main control switch. Make sure it's in the on position. The switch itself doesn't light up, but the little square below will be black if the switch is off. <laughs> That's probably what's happened. It's got switched off by mistake. The middle one of these three controls, you'll see it's slightly larger than the first one, controls the radiators. If you feel cold while you're there and need the radiators on, this needs to be turned to maximum. The last of the three controls, the one on the right, is usually on about a number four setting, which for the water in the taps is usually quite hot enough. Below the heating controls in the middle is a small round plastic button. If there isn't enough water in the pipes, sometimes the heater goes out. If this happens, you'll need to press this button to reset the heater. Hold it in for about five seconds and the heater should come on again. Then there's a little square indicator under the third knob that's a kind of alarm light. It'll flash if you need to reset the heater. Oh, it sounds complicated. 
<laughs> I'm sure you won't have any problems with it. There should be some more instructions on the side of the heater. Call me back if you can't make it work. OK. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20. While you're on the phone, we haven't managed to find a few things we need, like extra pillows for the beds and some washing powder. Is there any here? Pillows, uh, yes. If you look in the cupboard, the large white one upstairs, to the left of the bathroom door, there should be four or five on the top shelf. And if you want to do some washing, there's some powder for that, um, <laughs> probably by the back door. There's a kind of shelf there above the sink. In fact, I'm sure there's some there in a large blue box. You need about half a cupful for each wash. Oh, and that reminds me, the spare key to the back door is hanging on a hook on the wall by the sitting room window. Please make sure to put it back when you've used it. The previous guest lost it in the garden and I had to get another one made. And if you have any trouble with the lamps, you'll find some spare bulbs in a large cardboard box. It's on top of the washing machine with all kinds of useful things in it. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention when we last spoke. Yes? I've left you a local map so you'll be able to find your way around easily. It shows the whole area. I put it in the top drawer of the chest under the TV in your bedroom. There's a whole file of local information in there too. Thanks. What about visiting the town? Can you give us any advice? Yes. You'll need to take the car. It's too far to walk from the flat, really. You have to pay to leave your car in all the car parks now, I'm afraid. I like the one that's by the station best, and you can walk to the town centre from there in five minutes. That's where all the best restaurants are. But if you want a takeaway, the Italian one does really good pasta and pizzas. Call 7322281 for that one, or 766119 for the Chinese. They're both good, and they'll both deliver to the flat. As for places to visit, yes, do go and see the Railway Museum. The exhibition is small, but really good. It gets very crowded on Sundays, so I suggest you visit it on a quieter day, later in the week, but not on Thursdays, which is market day. You won't find anywhere to park, and it's also the only day of the week when they're not open. Anything else? Not for the moment. Thanks. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students who are studying to be teachers talking about science experiments. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mike. So what happened to you last week? Oh, I was sick with the flu. What's this I hear about a big assignment we've got to do? Oh, well, basically, we've got to find two science experiments to do with a group of eight-year-old children at the local primary school. And we've got to complete it by the end of the week. Oh, that sounds like hard work. Where are we supposed to get the ideas for these experiments from? Well, I managed to get hold of two books from the library. Oh, well done. How about if we take a look at the experiments in this book first and see if anything looks suitable? I can make notes as we go about equipment and the purpose of the experiments. OK. Let's see. Um, the first experiment is called Make Your Own Hovercraft, <laughs> which sounds very ambitious. <laughs> Mind you, you only need 20 balloons and a table. You don't need any special engines or anything like that. What do you do with it all? Uh, you blow up the balloons and you balance the table on them, upside down, of course, <laughs> and the kids get to ride around on it. You know, the other kids sort of push them around the room. The main purpose is to show how hovercrafts work and how things hover around on just a cushion of air. OK, that doesn't sound too bad. OK, ready for number two? Mm hmm Now, this one is called Unusual Measures of Lengths, and you basically use lots of paper clips. The kids go around the class measuring things, you know, how long the desk is and that sort of thing. Um, and then they all compare their answers. Uh, and basically, because not all paper clips are the same length, they should come up with some strange answers. <laughs> it's supposed to demonstrate the importance of having fixed units of measurement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. OK, now for number three, you need rock salt or copper sulphate. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Well, just put down the rock salt then. Um, apart from that, you only need a jar of water. Um, and basically you dissolve lots of salt into the water and watch the crystals form. So it basically teaches the kids about growing crystals. Yeah, I suppose it would be nice to grow something. Hmm. Let's move on and have a look at number four. OK, this one is called Spinning Colour Wheel. It looks like you get some cardboard and draw a circle on it, divide it into six equal segments and colour each one in using different colours, then you thread a piece of string through the middle. So we'd need some string as well? Yes, sorry. Um, and you spin the wheel around, and if you can get it spinning fast enough, hopefully the colours all merge and show up as white. Oh, I didn't know that. What's the principle behind it? Well, it's pretty elementary physics, really. It teaches them about how white light or ordinary light is made up. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Now, there's only one more left in this book, isn't there? What does that one say? Um, well, it's another one where they'd get to make something. Sounds very interesting. You need quite a lot of equipment, actually. A hand drill, an old record, a pin or needle, some paper and a bolt. Mm -hmm. Go on. What do they have to do? Well, they basically make a record player. The main idea is to teach them about recording sound but hopefully they'd also see that you need motion and an amplifier to make the sound heard. OK, well, it does sound interesting. Shall we go through all of those again and decide if any of them are going to be suitable? Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Right, number one. I thought this one sounded nice. There'd be lots of activity and it doesn't need too much in the way of equipment. Yes, that's true, but don't you think it's a bit risky to get a group of eight-year-olds pushing each other around a classroom like that? <laughs> well, someone could get hurt. No, I don't like the sound of that one at all. Maybe you're right. What about number two? With the paper clips. It sounds tame enough. Yes, a bit too tame, if you ask me. Mm. I think it needs to be something a bit more active and interesting than that, don't you? Yes, I suppose you're right. We won't get a very good mark if the children don't actually enjoy the experiments. 
And I suppose we could turn them off science for good. Well, what about the next one, number three? Now, I quite like the idea of this one. Yes, yeah, so do I. But I seem to remember when we did it at high school, we had to wait up to a fortnight before we saw any halfway decent results. Oh, yes. Well, that won't be any good then. We'll only see the kids for one or two hours at the most. Yes, and um, we have to do the experiments and write up our results within a week. So that one won't do at all. OK. Well, what did you think of number four? I like the idea of it, but do you think it will be a bit elementary for them? Well, they are only eight, you know. I know, but you know what I mean. Don't you think the activity itself is a bit babyish? Mm, maybe you're right. They might have fun, but, I mean, cutting out a circle and colouring it in. OK. Well, what about number five? I thought this one sounded a bit too good to be true. <laughs> Great equipment. Yeah. But don't you think it's a bit ambitious for this age group? I mean, I don't want to start off something and then have to abandon it if they just can't cope with it. I could see us ending up doing just about all of the work for them. I guess you're right. Oh, well, maybe we could store that idea away for later. Yep. Let's hope this second book has something better. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a university librarian giving a talk to new students. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. OK, are you all settled? Well, first of all, welcome to Cardiff University. I'm here to explain what we can offer you. Now, as a new student at the university, you will probably need some sort of guidance to help you to use the library effectively to study and research. Some of you have asked about a guided tour but we find this rather muddles people. So in this first week, we run a series of talks which focus on different aspects of the library and its resources. You'll also find that to get the most out of the library, you really do need to be computer literate. And so all this term, we run small classes which will bring you up to speed on how to access the computer loaded information. OK, now let me give you an outline of what's available to you. You'll find that the computers are increasingly used as a research tool. Many students do most of their research on the internet and the library computers are permanently online. Having found what you need, you'll find you can readily save texts on your personal computer space to print off when you need. You might think that it is the fastest way to get information, but the links can be slow. Clearly, you can find lots on there, but much of it is useless information, as it is from highly debatable sources, so be critical. You'll also find that the library has loaded several CD-ROMs onto the computers from specialist reference sources, such as the MLA. It means we can expand what we offer you at very little extra cost and saves us having to invest in more and more books. The CD-ROMs contain exactly the same information as the reference books, as the two are updated together. Now, most of you will need to refer to journal articles in your work, and you'll find you can also access these online, and we encourage you to do so. 
Clearly some of you will find the printed version more accessible as it sits on the shelves, but I'm afraid the intention is to phase these out eventually. However, you will still be able to print off a version of the text rather than photocopying the journal pages. So you must get used to working online. Naturally, we do still have the full range of classic reference books, additional to the CD-ROMs for you to use, and there are several copies of each one. This is because some of you may prefer to borrow a book rather than sit in the library. There is a restricted loan time on these so that they are not missing from the shelves for too long. Although there is a section manager for each part of the library, they are very busy. And so if you do get stuck looking for things, you should ask the relevant cataloguing assistant. As your training supervisor, I just oversee your induction and will not be around after this initial week. Some of you may be interested to know that the library is offering specialised training sessions on writing a dissertation. Obviously, this is not relevant to those of you who are undergraduates. It is just for postgraduates. Your department will discuss the planning stage of the dissertation, i.e. what you're going to do with you, and we will focus on the structure of it. However, the training will also include some time on the computers. I realise most of you know how to organise files, but we can show you the different ways to run data programs. Your tutors will tell you at the outset how to set out the chapters they require, but you will need to ask them how they would like you to organise the bibliography, because it varies depending on your subject area. When you've got something together, the trainer here will look through the draft version for you to see if it's okay. And one final point, for those of you who have registered from abroad, we can offer individual sessions on dissertations if you feel you need them. If you require language lessons, then they are available from the International Centre next to the Law Department. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.